I want to talk about this project that you're working on because it's a very cool idea. And this is something where you're wearing, t you're in, you're in the show. Mm -hmm. You're also producing the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Sonny, it's a, it's a fascinating idea. Do you want to lay out the idea? Because you haven't seen it. I have, no, I have not. <laughs> you I have not. It? Oh, I didn't get to, I didn't get to see it. No, no one sent it to me. No. I'll send it. No, no, no one said. No, maybe I don't think Sona and I watched the whole you. thing. Yeah. Weird. Did you? No, no. Oh. <laughs> no <they're laughs> kidding. Yeah. I'll say nice if he was no. you guys. Yeah. yeah. No, I, they, yeah. they always, if there's a tape that I'm allowed to watch, and I say tape to show how I old I am. I don't think they respect <laughs> podcasters. That's the feeling. No, I got, no, I got nothing. I got nothing. Wow. But yeah. I want to see All it right. because it sounds fantastic. Yeah. It's it's a very odd, very original, and um, it's a, it's kind of a mystery thriller set in the near future in Japan, mm -hmm. and it's about a woman, me, who has uh, is grieving the the loss or potential loss of her husband and son were on a plane crash, and mm -hmm. she doesn't know what happened. And in the aftermath of the plane crash, she sent what is considered a home bot, which is a little robot, a cute little robot um, that she finds out was designed by her husband. I think mm -hmm. I can say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the trailer. His uh, electronics robotic company. Yes. Or, yeah. Produced this little thing for yeah. me to kind of, to uh, keep me company and help me grieve and, the loss of my <clears> husband. <throat> and here's what's interesting to me about it because your character lives in Kyoto. And what fascinated me about it is that I actually did a, a piece on this when I was in Japan. You can rent a family because mm -hmm. there's a an issue in Japanese culture with people being lonely. Yeah. And what they decided to do is say, you can rent a family. So I did a <clears throat> travel segment where I went to Japan and went to the agency. And I rented, I said, I'm in Japan for literally like seven days, six days, but I want a wife, I want a, a teenage daughter, and I want a father. And the person, this was, they were all like, yes. And so they got me these people who oh did God. not really speak English. Oh my God. And so I started confronting my, quote, father about issues that I have with my real father. And guess what? It helped. <laughs> I had all this closure. Because he couldn't talk back. That's yeah. why it exactly. helped. Yeah. But he was he like, couldn't understand he was you. white haired and really handsome. <clears throat> and my, the woman who signed on to be my wife, she, she, and it's not her real daughter. It's also an actress or someone who's been trained to be the teenage daughter. The teenage daughter, I'm doing my shtick and my jokes. And at one point I say something to, um, the daughter and the daughter turns to the mother and in Japanese says, I don't understand what he's saying. And the mother says in Japanese, not understanding that we can translate all this and put it under the screen. He's making jokes, just laugh. <laughs> and <clears throat> she says, she says, but I don't get them. And the, and the wife says, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, <clears throat> It's <laughs> that that feels like somewhat emblematic of a, that's like a moment in your career, right? Does that happen that's a any moment, other time? That's a moment in my family <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah. Doesn't my, matter. Just laugh. They're not even yeah. funny. Yeah. Just yeah. laugh. My wow. wife is just like, look, he's wow. a good earner. Just <laughs> good earner. a good but, earner. But there is. I always think a good idea has an element of truth in it. And when I heard about this idea. And I guess it's based on a, a an Irish writer mm -hmm. wrote this. It's Colin O'Sullivan. Mm -hmm. It's such a great, it's a dark idea, but it's also a funny idea that you would have a consolation robot. Yeah. You would have someone who's, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, if you've experienced a loss, that's one thing, but I'm thinking it would have all these applications and it will exist. Yeah. Would have all these implications for people like us in show business. To just be like, good one, Conan. Oh, totally. No. You know? You're so funny. No, she, yeah. and the robot does think I'm hilarious. You're beloved. And I and I and my character hates it, you know, which is kind of funny too. Cause I bet you would you would hate it. If you actually no. <laughs> uh -oh. no. <laughs> I'd be like, this fucking robot gets it. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Somebody I, I'm smart. a robot. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was hired just to do this for him. Yeah, you guys aren't you even real, and right? Yet you don't. No. <laughs> so I learned these, quickly. All these two do is shit on me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, your robots that were, I don't know, the programming got backwards. You or broke our programming. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can't even do what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, I screwed up somewhere. I, I actually think perversely, I like the other. I like. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's right. You want to be ragged on. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think that's like human nature. But yeah, this, I mean, this is expressly weird because once the robot shows up, my life gets really dangerous and like people want things for me and, and I don't know what, and I'm not even sure I can trust her. So like, that's the other thing is like, you know, we're talking about AI and the imperfections of AI. Like you can train something to be, become sentient, to grow and learn really fast, but then what? Like, right. what does she... Does she have her own thing that she wants to do that, I don't know, might put me in danger? When it comes to something like AI, uh, I'm curious to get your take. Are you optimistic or very pessimistic? I'm a little bit like, I guess I would say agnostic about this because it is what it is. Like yeah, it's here. It's, exactly. it's an inevitability. Yes we're, yes. we're here. It's not like it's coming. It's already here. Right. Um, and I like to me, it's it's hilarious, ironic that I think AI was created at, at the pace and the, at the the sort of compulsion that it was because the people who make it are so obsessed with what it means to be human that they're yeah. trying to replicate it somewhere else. Um, so that to me is like, oh, oh, like we're it's like we're kind of missing the point, which is like instead of like really drilling down on that with each other, we're just like, you know, cr you know, cr training and creating, you know data sets and stuff somewhere else yes so that we can i don't know like know more about ourselves it doesn't really make that much sense to me but it's here i think there's obviously going to be tons of applications that are positive yeah and ton that are tons that are negative i mean look at the internet i'm 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 sort of like a, a luddite in that way like i think there's so much destruction that's come from social media yes mainly the monetization of behavior and like the the meddling with the way people interact with each other i think is so dangerous because we're so susceptible like yeah. we are built to be susceptible yes. you know we want to connect with each other so badly that we'll kind of believe anything to do it so i think ai could potentially do that to us too but i will say like working with this little robot or like even when i did the muppet movie like it was so quickly that I was like f having full conversations with Fozzie yes. and not the pu not the puppet performer. Yes. Like it's very, very quickly you start to believe these things have a, a soul. Yeah. You know, like a voice and an expression and a couple little like, you know, head tilts and like a touch of your wrist. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're so sweet and I care for you. But that's an, ar but that's an artist making that happen. Totally. See, and that's what I think. I think totally. There's still a person making that we'll see though yeah we're gonna find I out know. what i keep going back to is that it's the job of humanity artistic people to whatever comes along what i completely agree with is it's here there's no putting it back into a you know pandora's box and shutting it nailing it shut no that's not going to happen it's here so then it's a challenge to artists everywhere to push beyond that might right. sound like naive but I always think when, you know, and this analogy I think has been made by other people, but when photography came along, right, and I mean, it was a big thing for anyone who painted to make portraits. That was like, totally. that was a huge piece of the revenue. And suddenly they're like, we're good. And so then we get all this impressionism, expressionism, cubism. Mm -hmm. It's just always the job of humans if the technology challenges us for us to rise above, that's where I am. With rise it. above and to integrate. I yeah. mean, sound in movies changed everything. Like every single time we have some advancement in technology, we do have to change as artists. And like, I think young people younger than us don't understand the tension where we feel like our pure thing that we do is somehow at odds with the technology that's yes. available. They're just like, awesome, let me take that and extrapolate and interpolate and like, you know, do a bunch of stuff with it. So. It is going to be one of those things like we're going to have to become friends with it yeah. because it's going to be how we have to make what we make and hopefully yep. better. I don't know. When you talk about being a Luddite, being someone who's not that comfortable with technology, um, I'm definitely that way. I've, I'm a pen and paper guy. 
um, when I go on the computer, it's either uh, Sona standing behind me and uh, or Grandpa my, hit or, the return yeah. button. <laughs> I don't understand. Power on, power on. So I have like an uneasy relationship with it, but I but I think the thing that I dislike the most about the last twenty five years is that um, A, I've aged terribly, and B- <laughs> No. No, no, no. No, you're me. cute. You're, for, you're forever crush. No, you that's, are. Please. You are. No, you'll sure. see. Um, no, you'll see. I'll the, see. You'll <laughs> see. What? what I know. What, what does that mean? mean? What does that mean? It means that when I take my headset off, this <laughs> is going to fall <laughs> apart. You're just going to Dorian Gray in <laughs> 20 <laughs> seconds? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what is it on Game of Thrones? Oh, Melisandre. Oh, Melisandre. Melisandre. Yeah. Melisandre <laughs> where once you leave, right, I retreat right. to another room. Right, and, you're like, and I Ugh. and suddenly I just and I have <laughs> low hanging what we call dugs. That's a shri a low hanging what? A low hanging breath. That's what she Melisandre on Game of Thrones when she was she's beautiful and Doug. then she Who's takes we and who's calling them dugs? Doug? Uh, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm not in this like, with you. The poets back the classic poets. They called them dugs? Dugs. D U G S. Oh, look yeah. at a cult. Oh, look at okay, us. Just talk Do about you, people's dugs. Triple dugs is like uh I'm gonna say either T. S. Eliot or um it's one of the great poets. Yes, it's a term for uh, an old woman's uh, yeah, D-U-G-S yeah old man with wrinkled dug yes wow. means like a man or a woman with, with breasts and sagging down I'm only calling them dugs from now on <laughs> but it's not yeah, a Google search the, gonna but be it's like not a, a compliment it's not no a compliment. I know but I'm gonna be like but I'm gonna turn it into a compliment okay well I just want all of our listeners to know that's the word of the day dugs <laughs> dugs <laughs> if someone's breasts are really hanging down man or woman go like you got some shriveled dugs there <laughs> can you say hey term. nice dugs it doesn't I'm, work that's that what way. I'm doing. Yeah. No, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. We're changing it. And if yeah. someone says where'd that come from, go, hey man, Ezra Pound, T. S. Eliot, get with it. Yeah. And then you're cool. <laughs> and then you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> then you're cool. <laughs> anyway, here's the part that I was trying saying that I don't like about the last 20 years before we got off onto <clears throat> shriveled dugs. Is that <laughs> stop, stop saying shriveled dugs. <laughs> shriveled dugs. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm gonna say is that I think we have found they found a way to game humans and they realized that humans naturally are attracted to and compelled by conflict. I think we kind of always knew that, which is why we like movies where things blow up and there's a bad guy and a good guy. But they, they've gone hyper with it so that everything, including the news, has to be people shouting at each other. Yeah. All reality yeah. shows have to be people shouting at each other. Um, there has to be you know, if we were doing this right, I'd constantly be angry at Matt. Matt would constantly be angry at me. Oh, well. So, you know, well, I know, but you are, but you have to, you know, you know, tamp it down. Right. But I guess my point is, that's the part where I think, I've, I've seen it in fact comedy, mm. where a lot of comedians, they, they just want to say things that piss people off, mm -hmm. or they want to rail against this or rail against that. And I think that can be fine until we're losing our sense of like, is this funny? Is yeah. this something that makes me laugh? Does also, this come from- we lo we're losing sight of what real conflict is. Yeah, Because yes. everything is conflicted now. Right. And like our fight, fight or flight is like, is, is so often being incited that it's like, you know, your whatever cortisol you're like dumping that you're supposed to use to like run away from a lion or a tiger and go hide in a cave for two months, like all day long, every day, people are like cortisol, cortisol. I'm I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Somebody, I'm in trouble. Like yeah. like things are the world's gonna end all day long, every day. Yes. So you're so you become so desensitized when like you're actually supposed to care about something and something's a real conflict. You yes, know. Yes. Yes. It's it's very strange. And also that it's all intentional that the people who are building these platforms know that they know it and, and they're, they're buying yeah. into it and they want to modify our behavior. They want us to keep coming back and engaging. The way to do that is to keep us in conflict. And like we're I mean, everybody's mad at each other right now. They should be mad at the people who built these platforms. Yeah, this is not this is not to me. This is not what like free speech and technology can do at its best. Like, I know everybody's like, but we're connected. Like, are we? No. I was like, we're not connected. Well, I was at some Silicon Valley event, I want to say maybe eight years ago. And afterwards, I'm talking to a lot of these um, Silicon Valley bigwigs, you know, billionaires who are in their 20s and early 30s. And they were, one of them said to me like, well, you know, we're doing, we're just making the world a better place. Mm. And I said, no, 
you're making the world a different place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I don't know. And then we got into it because Ooh, they didn't good, like that. Good. They I'm glad like you that. did. But then they gave me a billion dollars. And, and you I, shut oh. up. And you just shut I up. I said, on the you're spot. making the world a better place. <laughs> <laughs> And Can then, we have some? No, no, I use, <laughs> I bought land with it. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. The land. I have all of Connecticut. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then underwater, I own everything underwater off. You know, you Whoa. don't pay us for this, right? What's that? You, we don't get paid for this? Oh, I know. It's okay. a volunteer That's thing. That's a bad deal for you, man. You got to look yeah. out for where yourself. Are they gonna, where are they going to go? Um, <laughs> true. I got nothing else going on. Um, it's an Apple TV Plus series called Sunny, and I have not seen it yet, but I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it because it's a very cool idea. Uh, but also, um, I'm just, uh, I said it before, I'll say it again. I adore you. You are so funny. You're so smart. Um, you're Jesus Christ. You're, I'm Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, I know. Congratulations. What? Congratulations. No, no. I'm accepting that title. No, you didn't let me finish. Jesus Christ, comma, you're Rashida Jones. And oh, okay. that's a pretty cool thing to be. Okay. I think I'm more of the Jesus figure here. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Ruining things. Kind of rose from the dead when you think about it. <laughs> What? Well, I had a bad cold last week. Oh. Even though, now I'm fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, please, I I loved having you here, and please so come nice back to be here. anytime. I would love to. It's and so you're also in the neighborhood, so come by sometime and have lunch with us. Yeah, and you'll pay, I yeah. guess. Is uh, this is this a real offer? Yeah, <laughs> we I, we will take you out to lunch to For a real? really nice. Yeah, we'll go to Great White right down the street. I love Great White. Yeah, awesome. And I'm all hooked up there. Are you? Meaning, if I go there and I wait long enough, they let me in. <laughs> I know. They don't throw you out. <laughs> That's my definition of hooked up. If I get there early, put my name down and wait for a really long time, <laughs> half the time I get in, I'm hooked up. <laughs>